Okay guys, after discussing about the RAS pathway, now let's discuss about the nephrons. Okay, so before discussing about the structure and function of nephrons, here itself I want you to know a few basic points. Okay, the basics. Now renal circulation. How much blood is actually going to your kidneys? How many kidneys do you have? Two kidneys are there. Now kidneys are getting blood, blood or not? Yes, kidneys are getting the blood supply from the abdominal aorta. Renal artery is coming. Now that renal artery is bringing the blood to both the kidneys. So every minute, how much blood is going to both the kidneys? Okay, so renal blood flow is how much? Renal blood flow is 1.2 liters. Okay, the blood. Okay, total blood is 1.2 liters. Both the kidneys. Okay, so kidneys are receiving almost 20% of the cardiac output. Okay, 5 liters is cardiac output. So 20% means almost 1 liter. So every minute almost approximately 1 liter of blood is going to both the kidneys. Okay, now out of this 1 liter. Okay, if you take 1 liter at 1200 ml. Now, how much is actually plasma? We all know plasma is 60%. Okay, the plasma is 60%. So, out of 1 liter of blood, okay, RBC, WBC, platelets, these are the cells, right? These are all the cells in the blood. Now, if you take out the cells, the remaining fluid, the fluid part is called as a plasma. So, how much plasma is actually growing? How much? That is a renal plasma flow. The renal plasma flow is 625 ml. So, blood flow is 1200 ml, out of which 625 ml is a plasma. So, we are all the time talking about the plasma. We are mainly concerned about the plasma, not the blood. Why? Because RBC, WBC, platelets, okay, they are not filtered. They are not filtered. So, what actually filters in the nephron? It's a plasma. It's a fluid which actually filters. Okay. So, how much fluid is going? 625 ml of plasma is going. Okay. So, blood flow is 1.2 liters. Renal plasma is 625. Now, imagine that this is the, this is one nephron which is representing all the nephrons. So, how much? Plasma is going, 625 ml of plasma is coming to a nephron. Okay, not to one nephron. Here I am showing you. Okay, I am representing all the nephrons as one nephron. Now, how much plasma is going? Now, 625 ml of plasma is coming to the nephron. Now, out of the 625 ml, do you think all the 625 ml will be filtered? No, all the 625 ml is not filtered. Out of the 625 ml, only 125 ml is filtered. So, this is called as filtration fraction. Okay. So, what is a normal GFR? Okay. Now, what is a normal filtration? Out of 625 ml, 125 ml is filtered. So, out of 625, 125. So, this is something called as filtration fraction. So, filtration fraction is how much? 20%. 20%. Now, if you ask me, what is this filtration fraction? Sir, simple. How much is going? 625 going. How much is filtered? 125 is filtered. So, out of, see, out of 625, 125 is filtered. So, 125 divided by 625. So, that is GFR divided by renal plasma flow. How much? 20%. Okay, if it is 20%. This is the normal filtration fraction. 20% is actually filtered. Okay. Now, here itself, I want uh, you to know this one important MCQ, okay, which will be coming up in all the competitive exams. So, we know renal plasma flow value, direct renal plasma flow value is 625 ml, we know. What is the GFR? 125 ml per minute, okay, we know. But if you want to find them, then you need to take certain markers, okay, you need to inject a substance called as para amino hippuric acid. You need to inject a substance called as para amino hippuric acid and you have to calculate the renal plasma flow that we will do anyway later okay but renal plasma flow is calculated with the help of which substance at the renal plasma flow is estimated with the help of which substance plasma flow para amino hippuric acid plasma p for p so renal plasma flow is estimated by para amino hippuric acid it helps you to estimate the renal plasma flow in the same way, GFR, if I ask you what is the GFR, you will say GFR is 125 ml per minute. Okay, every minute 125 ml of plasma is getting filtered in the nephrons. You know the value, but how to calculate it? So again, there are certain markers. Okay, so what is the marker of GFR? The marker of GFR is inulin. Okay, not insulin, inulin. Okay, inulin, creatinine, cystatin C, all these are the markers for the, all these are the markers for the GFR estimation, GFR estimation. We'll, we'll see that later. But now let's start with the topic. Okay, structure and functions of the nephron, structure and functions of the nephron. First of all, let's see how many types of nephrons are there. Okay, there are two types of nephrons present. Okay, you, you all know the structure, even you are like, you know, intermediate. Okay, class 11th and 12th, you would have studied about the structure of nephron. What is the structure of nephron? Bowman's capsule is there. After Bowman's capsule, proximal convoluted tubule. After that, loop of Henle, descending limb of loop of Henle, ascending limb of loop of Henle, distal convoluted tubule, collecting tubules, collecting ducts. These are the normal parts of the nephron. So, 
structure of nephron every student knows but here i want you to know what are the types of nephrons there are two types of nephrons present what are they the first type of nephron are called as juxta medullary nephron and the other type are called as a cortical nephron so cortical nephrons and juxta medullary nephrons out of which cortical nephrons are the most common nephron they are maximum in number maximum nephrons are the cortical nephrons now you will get it out so this classification of nephrons juxta medullary nephron cortical nephron is dependent on what on what basis we have classified the nephrons into two types based on their location okay based on their location if you look here see this is a renal pyramid okay this is one renal pyramid now we all know that the cortex uh, the, the sorry the uh, kidney is divided into two parts the outer cortex and inner medulla so this is the cortex okay right now what i am pointing this is the cortex and this is all the medulla now see here two types of nephrons are there now this is the first type of nephron see this is the first type of nephron which is called as a cortical nephron see it's a cortical nephron and why i'm calling it as a cortical nephron why because see the bowman's capsule where it is present the bowman's capsule proximal convoluted tubule and most of the loop of henle the most of the loop of henle and distal convoluted tubule everything is present in the cortex so most of the nephron is present in the cortex so these are cortical nephron 85% of the nephrons okay they actually forms a urine okay they actually forms a urine now the other type of nephron see this one now see it is very near to the medulla see here is a medulla so the bowman's capsule is present near to the medulla if you look at here see the most of the nephron is going deep down into the medulla so what is this this is loop of henle so loop of henle is descending down okay it is going deep into the medulla so okay long loop of henle is there for juxta medullary nephron so what are these nephrons called as juxta medullary medulla see, here is the medulla juxta means side just side to the medulla okay these nephrons are present which are called as juxta medullary nephrons okay so based on the location we have done the classification anyway now let's see the differences important differences cortical nephrons are maximum in number 85% of the nephrons are cortical nephrons okay well and good where exactly is the renal corpus uh, capsule location the renal capsule is located in the outer cortex capsule means the bowman's capsule okay bowman's capsule or the renal capsule yes it is present in the cortex okay in the outermost cortex okay near the periphery near the periphery okay and these cortical nephrons yes they are surrounded by peritubular capillaries if i show you see this is a cortical nephron right this is a cortical nephron now this cortical nephron see it is surrounded by this blood vessel see this is the blood vessel which is surrounding the cortical nephron now that blood vessel is called as peritubular capillaries okay peritubular capillaries peritubular capillaries are the blood vessel surrounding the cortical nephrons okay now look at here in this image here i am showing you the juxta medullary nephron even this juxta medullary nephron is also having this blood vessel okay now what is this blood vessel called as this blood vessel are in a simple way if this is the juxta medullary nephron now even this juxta medullary nephrons are also surrounded by the blood vessels now the blood vessels which are surrounded by the juxta medullary nephrons are called as a vasa recta okay so vasa recta so what exactly is vasa recta vasa recta is a blood vessel it is surrounding it is surrounding juxta medullary nephrons okay that's the one difference okay now what is the function of this cortical nephrons cortical nephrons mainly forms the urine it mainly forms the urine okay and what about the loop of henle what about the loop of henle the loop of henle for the cortical nephron is short i have shown you the cortical nephrons okay the cortical nephrons they are having short loop of henle okay short loop of henle okay now let's see the differences between the cortical and juxta medullary nephrons okay cortical nephrons we have completed okay we have completed the important points about the cortical nephrons now let's discuss about the juxta medullary nephrons juxta medullary nephrons are very little in number okay they are just 15% very little in number 15% now where exactly is the bowman's capsule located bowman's capsule is located near to the medulla okay it's near to the medulla the bowman's capsule or the renal capsule is located just side to the medulla okay now this juxta medullary nephrons already have explained to you the juxta medullary nephrons are surrounded by the blood vessels these blood vessels are called as vasa recta okay vasa recta okay done now what are the functions of this juxta medullary nephrons now juxta medullary nephrons actually concentrates your urine okay concentrates your urine for example now imagine you got like misplaced in a desert okay you went to desert safari okay you went to the desert safari now in the desert, uh, desert safari you got misplaced from your team now you are just like you know roaming in the desert now in that hot sun you are getting dehydrated okay so you are sweating and fluid is going out of your body now in that condition i am asking you is that a good time to produce diluted urine no you need to conserve as much as water as possible okay you need to reabsorb as much water as possible okay you need to produce concentrated urine so concentration of a urine is done by juxta medullary nephrons so this juxta medullary nephrons they will go deep down into the medulla 
okay their loop of henle goes deep down into the middle la such an arrangement such having such a long loop of henle will help to concentrate the urine will help to concentrate the urine so juxtamedullary nephrons are helping in concentration of the urine and also i have explained to you the loop of henle is long okay the loop of henle is long and this see this hairpin bend okay hairpin bend penetrates up to the tip of the papilla this is called as a hairpin bend okay this is a hairpin bend now this hairpin bend is almost going to the deep inside the cortex okay it's going deep inside the cortex okay so these are some important differences in the types of nephrons okay i have already discussed the structure of nephron and the types of nephron after this let's discuss about the glomerular filtration in the next video let's start with the topic of glomerular filtration how actually filtration happens okay why actually filtration happens how much happens we'll discuss in the next video hope the video is helpful thank you